Praise the Lord, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started on this Wednesday night. Don't know if it's summer or fall or something in between. It just changes every day. It might be snowing tomorrow. Who knows? Um, good to be back. Missed everyone on Sunday. Um, exciting uh, for the worship team. We're going to be taking it to the streets on Saturday. Um, we will be at the Kingdom House of Prayer in Ankeny um, sharing praise and worship. Um, the the word from the person up there was to just uh, do what you do <laughs> and encourage others to stay. No, he knows not what he asks. Um, but he said that, you know, I think hopefully it will encourage others to step out in the spirit and be led by the spirit and not be so locked into the songs that we sing and, you know, just let the spirit guide and let the prophetic come forth. So there were some good words that came forth Friday night. I know I was moved myself by some of the words that came forth that, the Lord was impressing upon me as I was praying um, before the Eastern Gate Friday night that I said something, I was, I was singing, I think I was singing a song, and it said, open the floodgates of heaven, and it just struck me like lightning that our mouths are the gates of heaven. We are the ones that can loose heaven. We are the ones that open the floodgates with our words of faith, with his words spoken with a heart full of belief and trust, and um uh, you know, and another revelation that came forth is that I've always thought of the throne of grace being a place to attain, a place to go. And he said, the throne of grace is in you. Yes. It is you. We are, if we are truly one with him, he is grace. And we are an extension of him, of his body. We are grace to this world. And so rather than looking for something to attain or go, look for something to give, to loose, to set free. So um, anyway, praise the Lord. Looking forward to um, loosing the word of grace into the, uh, to the atmosphere, into the realm, into this region, to other bodies of believers. Um, always looking forward to networking and, um, you know, taking it out. You know, we keep talking about taking it out of the wall, so I'm excited for an opportunity to, to share what God's doing here in the word, what that will come forth. So, yeah, anybody have any prayer requests tonight? Lord of grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, there's goosebumps for you, goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I just, uh, I told um, told Mike when we were getting ready, I said, you know, you, you pray about what, there's so much that we have here. There's so much revelation that we've, we, we you know, it, we almost get used to it, right? Because we know, we know, and we're so confident in just moving on to the next thing. And where do you start? Where do you start with people who have no idea what grace really is? Mm -hmm. And I just, I felt like the Lord was saying, my church has an identity crisis. Tell them who they are. Yeah. Tell them who they are. Mm -hmm. And I, I keep hearing what Jason said. Don't pray to victory. Pray from victory. Oh, if that's not revelatory. And that doesn't change the way we pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We already have the victory. So, anybody have any prayer requests or any needs? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> uh, a few months ago, uh, when I was up in Vermont and I uh, prayed for my uncle, uh, he had two brain tumors and he had seven spots in his lung. Uh, <coughs> prayed with him and then I had a chance to do that with him before my wife. And <coughs> he was four years old and he was the same age as my brother. He was already leaving for the dog and had to go back and fix the dog. But when I came back, I asked if I could bring Zach with me, tell him what the situation was, took him in, uh, did another scan the other day. I think there's only brain and bone. Uh, Praise the Lord. spots on his lung, five are gone, so two, two left. Praise the Lord. Total healing. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sister asked for prayer. She's having um, surgery on reconstructive surgery in her vertebrae in her neck, and um, she's pretty worked up about it. So she asked for prayer, Amen. which is a good thing. <laughs> so Friday morning she'll be going in, and I'm expecting a full recovery. She's suffered from she had a car accident many years ago and has had um, some injuries that she suffered with for a long time. So I'm thanking God for the the release of the pain that she's lived with for many years. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> this morning, I was talking to my mom, and uh, we, we, we were talking about my sister and how she keeps trying to make things happen in our lives before we get them done together. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about. Abraham and uh, Sarah and God saying, I'm going to give you a child. <clears throat> but now it isn't happening, and they try to do it on their own. And I thought, it's not us, it's the enemy, I guess. Uh, but then sometimes I get a little anxious, and I get a little Abrahamic. <laughs> Speak on the promise. Yeah. Speak on the promise. We will. Yeah. All right, anybody else? All right, let's, well, let's stand and let's go to the Lord tonight. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord. We lift our voices in praise, Lord. We lift our voices for the needs of the people in our lives, Lord. We come in faith, Lord, asking for you to intercede in these situations. Right now, we speak healing. Lord, we speak manifestations of these things. We speak patience, Lord. We speak the birth, the miraculous birth, Lord, that we wait for the promise, Lord. We don't want the works of man, Lord. We want your promise fulfilled, Lord. We want your miraculous birthing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when we put our trust and our faith in you, Lord, that you never, ever disappoint, Lord. That you make a way where there is no way, Lord. That you turn the morning into joy, Lord. Thank you. you give us beauty for that.
your spirit that sustains us and guides us, Lord. Be our eyes, be our ears. Holy Spirit, use our mouth, our song, our instruments of praise. Be glorified, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord. Stir up the gifts of every member of the body of Christ. Lord. Stir up the gifts anew, Lord. Those that have put aside and have been distracted, Lord, those that have been purpose, the place, that now is the time. Now is the time for all members of the body to arise and take their place. And you will receive the glory, Lord, as you reveal yourself, as you manifest through your sons and daughters, as you reveal yourself in this world, as your kingdom comes to this earth. Have your way, Lord have your way in this service tonight and in every day of our lives. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, God. Eastern Gate, House of Prayer, traveling to Kingdom Gate, <laughs> Kingdom House of Prayer. The Eastern Gate will now be uh, loosing on the north side of the town, and taking it to the north. Okay, very good. Yeah. And then did we want to meet here before and travel together, do you think? Uh, yeah, that will be Okay. The base, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what time do you want the worship team to be? Uh, Should we be there at 4? 4.30? Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, and um, I forgot, but this Sunday <laughs> we're doing a children's ministry meeting. Uh, is that for Sunday? Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. Lord, speak the word tonight. Will you not, not revive, revive us again, again that, that your people, people may rejoice, rejoice in you? you. Yes, Lord. I, I am a believer, believer and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Yes, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Lord. James, do you want to take the offering tonight? He does look like the guy from Up. We gotta grab one of those. Backup vocals? She was supposed to be doing backup vocals. But they asked they her to leave? To leave. And the last time she was here, I played that guitar. So, where's the anointing, man? There's power.
And then when the mailman comes, he runs out, and before the mailman can put the mail in the box, he takes the mail and brings it back and gives it to him every day. I said, I know that. And he said, well, how do you know? My dog told me. <laughs> James, I wish you were still there for the symbols. Praise the Lord. But... Cha-ching. <laughs> okay, well, moving right along to uh, John chapter 3. My wife's sitting back there freaking out, thinking, oh, my God, he didn't meet him. He didn't say that to him. There goes the coffee clashes they were hoping for. No. <laughs> In fact, he was pulling out of the driveway when I came out to leave. I waved at him the other day, but he was mowing. John chapter 3, beginning at verse 3 uh, through verse 8. We were talking about Suzanne was uh, talking about identity and how people are, that's one of the big problems within the church, and uh, that is really what I want to talk to you about tonight, so praise the Lord. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now that's what we should be doing, that's what we're, you know, that's what we're endeavoring to do. The worship team's doing that, that's what all of us are, are trying to accomplish. And uh, if, you, if you were to read on, I'm not going to, we don't need to go on into it, but Jesus said, look, I'm, I'm talking about spiritual things, and you're hearing me with natural things. He said, well, I'm not going to go back in my mother's womb and be born again. And Jesus said, how, if you can't understand this common kind of way of relating to this new birth, what are you going to do when I start talking, really start speaking spiritual stuff? So, you know, that's kind of the way that where the church is, I think, a lot of times, is we're still trying to get some natural understanding of things that are spiritual. We're just supposed to go with whatever the Spirit, you know, however the Spirit wants to flow, that's the way we flow. We just, because He wants to take us into some things that we have 
not yet even began to think about, yet alone uh, figure out how we're going to do it, you know. We just go, and he'll do the work, amen? Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay, so according to the Bible, what determines identity? Birth, right? Birth determines identity. That's the reason for the scriptural terms, you know, the new birth and being born again. And that's why those terms are such a big deal in the kingdom of God. Because it's, it's our identity. It's who we are. It's what we are, you know. Behavior doesn't determine identity. Birth does. Right? I was born a human. In spite of the <laughs> argument that some may throw out there. But I was born a human, so I am human, right? My DNA says human, so I'm human, right? My behavior doesn't determine that. Everybody's seen these uh, deals where they'll have a, like a nightclubs and sometimes, you know, other situations where they'll have a hypnotist. And he'll call three or four people up out of the audience, and he'll hypnotize them, and he'll say, okay, now, you're a monkey, you know, you're a chicken, yeah, and, uh, and so they, and you're a dog, you know, one's, the dog is barking, and the, the monkey is scratching and leaping, and, <laughs> and the chicken is quacking, and, you know, it just goes on. And then they wake up, and everybody laughs at them and makes fun of them for acting like a fool. And... That's kind of what the church does. You know, we, we are what we are. And you can try to act like something, you know, and it looks stupid because it's not you. See, when we got born again, we became a new creature. But that new creature still looks like the old creature. And it still has the same soul and the same reasoning and thinking as the old one did. It has the same personality. Now, obviously, there's some morality and things will change over time and, and to the extent that we renew our minds. But we don't need to be something other than what we are. We are what we are. We were born a human and we were born again a spirit. So now we're still a spirit. We just are in this human body. Amen? Amen. So uh, behavior doesn't determine who I am. In other words, this is, this is the human, but that's not what I am. I'm a spirit. I just happen to be in a body, in a human body. So the, the behavior of this body does not determine who I am. My birth determined who I am. My new birth determined that I am a new creature, a brand new species, amen, with one brother, older brother, Jesus. Amen? And I can do everything he can do as long as I stay true to my identity. Amen? I can pretend to be a monkey, but don't put me up in the top of trees unless my insurance is paid up. You know, I can pretend to be a chicken, but I'm not laying eggs. So I am who I am. I am a spirit. All right? So let's look again at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, if we would do what the Spirit leads us to do, and we did that on a regular basis, consistently, it would not, we wouldn't be uncomfortable with it. We're only uncomfortable with it is because we're still struggling with the identity of, is this me or is this me? Praise the Lord. If we, if we go from the Spirit, we would find what an impact we'd have. Again, it goes back to what Suzanne said. By the Spirit, we've been given this ministry of reconciliation. The only way we can reconcile is by the Spirit. We can be the nicest people in the world. We can, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. We should be. 
but that doesn't reconcile people to God. What reconciles people to God is the same thing that reconciled us to God. The grace of God, freely given, amen, and operating by the Spirit. Not looking at that person, but re realizing that within that person is a spirit that God wants to bring to life, that God wants to birth. Another Jesus. Amen? So, what's the, what's the wor root word of creation? Create, right? Now, when you create something, you form it out of nothing. That's why a few weeks ago I was talking about we don't create anything. We make stuff. You know, we experiment with stuff. But we don't really create anything, and not as humans, not as humans. The first time anything can be created with us is when we're born again, once we've had the Spirit of God. Now we can begin to do things the way God does it. So when God created you, he didn't improve you. It wasn't an experiment. It wasn't like, I think I'll try to fix this area up and you know, do something over here and kind of redo this. Because you're not a better version of who you were. In spite of what religion will try to teach you, that that's what they're doing, basically, is, is fixing you up, you know. But that's not the, the truth. The truth is you're not even the same person. Right. Praise the Lord. Born again. You have been reborn into a new person. A different person. A completely different species. Praise the Lord. Uh, look, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. See, we need to mess with this old gray matter up here that wants to constantly drag us back into that old man and try to convince us that that's who we are. Because that guy is limited. That woman is limited. That person is limited to their intellect, their education, their experiences, their talents, their gifts, whatever. But this new creature can create because it is creative. It is the nature of God. It's the life of God. Right? So for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, and you could say unto creative works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We were ordained for this. We were created for this. Praise the Lord. And because of that, you're never going to be satisfied with your identity if you only look to your accomplishments between birth and death. Amen? That's body level. That's sense level. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with having a really good job. There's nothing wrong with having a good education. There's nothing wrong with having talents. But if our life is just simply measured by those things, we've missed what we're here for. Those are all sensory things. They're all body things. Amen? And the truth is your identity will never be found at the soul level. Not through your intellect. Not through your character. It has to be found at the level of the spirit. Because our identity is in Christ. It isn't in any of those other things. People say, well... Uh, they, they, they say, what do you do? And you tell them what do you do, and then that's who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a banker. I'm a salesman. I'm a financial advisor. I'm a whatever. And all of a sudden, that's you. No, that's just what you do. But that doesn't identify you. You are a child of God. Yeah. You are supernatural. Yeah. Amen? You are a creative being. A created being, but a creative being as well. Amen? Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. Everybody quotes this. For in him we live and move. And I look at this. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now, look at that. That's life. That's all of life. Living, moving, being. Right? 
That's all. That is life. That's a definition, amen, of life. All right, look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Christ is everything. It's the song you just sang. Praise the Lord. Now, this raises the question, if the old man or that, that other person, that human, dies once we are saved, why do we still sin? <laughs> Whoops. Praise the Lord. In order to answer that, you have to understand both who we are and where the battleground lies. Now, let's start with who we are. The question is to all of us, can we, as a Christian, or as Christians, in Christ, have the power to overcome every temptation? Do, do we really have that ability? And based on the Bible, we'd have to conclude, yes. In Christ, we can. Sounds great. But, then we have to admit, we don't actually overcome every temptation. I know you're out there, I can hear you breathing. <laughs> In fact, the truth be told, we don't even come close. That leads us to conclude that Christ possesses the power to overcome every temptation, right? Christ possesses the power to overcome every temptation. That's the only reason he can be our Savior. And yes, he's in you and he's in me. So, in and of myself, right, the flesh, that firstborn thing, amen, I can't do it. In and of myself, I don't have the ability to overcome hardly anything, let alone everything. But in Jesus, I am more than an overcomer. I have already overcome everything. You understand what I'm saying? I'm overcoming every moment and will throughout eternity. But I cannot be looking at this to determine whether I'm an overcomer or not. Because this is not who I am. This is not my identity. This does not overcome. It may overcome a little, and then it'll, it'll be overcome. It's the law in flesh. Nobody can keep the law, even though they pretended like they could. That's why Jesus said to the rabbi, you've got to be born again. If you're going to get into the kingdom, you've got to be perfect. You've got to be an overcomer. Ah, here's the rub. You can't overcome. So what do you need? You need to be in Christ who has already overcome. Now that makes you more than an overcomer, right? That makes you more than a conqueror because you didn't do anything and yet you've overcome it all. But it's your true identity that has overcome because Jesus is everything. It's his life. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? This is a... Uh, it's, it seems existential, but it is what it is. It, it is the reality. It is the truth. We're not schizophrenic, but we make ourselves schizophrenic by going to the wrong churches, praise the Lord, and listening to the wrong stuff and believing the wrong things, and we go through our entire life crippled. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's established. 
We are overcomers. We are perfect in him. We are uh, the just men made perfect, right? Men being a generic term. So what's the battleground then? Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 6. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Galatians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So all that means nothing. Right? That's where we started. Amen. So here's the devil's M.O. He's banking on you to feed your flesh. Amen. Your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, everything. He wants your perception of reality to be your actions. Your thoughts. Your Good deeds, bad deeds, your successes, your failures. That, that's the whole agenda of the enemy. In everywhere, in the church. It's permeated the church. He doesn't want you to know the truth that makes you free, which is your righteousness. That you are the righteousness of God in Christ in spite of any action. John 8 and verse 32. Man, you guys remember this when you get there Saturday night? And you just let you take over. Praise the Lord. Stuff will happen. Amen? And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Praise God. If you don't know the truth, you're always going to believe your actions are going to be what earns you righteousness or takes your righteousness. Just think about the story of the prodigal son. We'll, I'm going to close with this. Jesus is telling this story to the Pharisees. He wasn't telling it to the sinners. The sinners were the ones the Pharisees were complaining about because he was eating with them. So he tells this story to the Pharisees to get them to understand what's actually going on. And so he's with these, Jesus is with these, quote, sinners in, in terms of what the, how the Pharisees saw him. But Jesus isn't telling the story to them. He's telling it to the Pharisees. And he leaves the story with the, because you all know it, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but the, where he leaves off on this story is with the self-righteous guy not coming to the party, right? But the unrighteous one being the guest of honor. What did the prodigal do? He just came to the party. He just showed up. And God, before he could even get to his father, his father comes running to him. He just trusted in his father's mercy. He's the guest of honor, and the self-righteous one is standing out here angry, frustrated, bitter, totally in the flesh. See, when you come in the spirit, God will clothe you with his righteousness. He'll shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
Amen. He'll put the ring, which is the signifying uh, symbol of your position of authority. Amen. But you got to come by the Spirit. Otherwise, everything is being measured and judged externally. Praise the Lord. So let's just wrap up with this. Know who you are in Christ. A child of God, just like the prodigal son. And that truth will set you free. It'll set your spirit free. Amen. You know, Jesus talked about being taken back into bondage or going, Paul refers to it as going back into bondage, which was simply us humans going back to the sense realm for our identification. Mm -hmm. Having begun in the spirit, you know, don't, don't now go back. You were set free from that flesh when you were born again. And then we spend the rest of our earthly life trying to make the flesh something it can't be instead of just being who we are. Spirits. Praise the Lord. That's what this world needs to see. They don't need to see a better Nathan or a better Suzanne or a better Sally or a better Roberto or a better any of us because it's still flawed. What they need to see is the Spirit of God. They need to see something supernatural. And the only thing supernatural about us is our identity. It's who we are. But we've masked this identity with an alias. Amen? Yeah. Aliases are what you see on post office walls. Right. <laughs> right? Criminals have aliases. We have a name that we're called by. Right. It's Jesus. That's our identity. Uh -huh. Let's just be that. Let those kids in. Praise the Lord. Okay? That's our identity. Let's, let's focus on who we are and stop allowing the enemy to drag us into this flesh thing. Amen? Amen? I'm not a preacher. I am Jesus in this world. Now, you say, well, my God, Please don't, I mean, how can you say that? Because that's what the Bible says. The problem, the reason we choke on that is because we're trying to, I, to equate Jesus with Nathan. That's not what I said. I said I, who I really am, is Jesus in this world. And if that's not true, then everything in the Bible is a, a lie. Because it says he and I are one. He dwells within my spirit. We read the scriptures. I live and move and have my being in him. He is my life. Praise the Lord. So you can see where the this kind of uh, dichotomy is. We, we, we look at it and we're thinking, that can't be because I'm just too much of a screw up or, I, or, or my life is just not perfect or, you know, I whatever. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm, I, you know, I don't think spiritual thoughts 24 hours a day. The reason we don't is because we're so focused on this flesh. You let the spirit go, and it can do amazing things in a split second. And you'll wonder, how did that happen? Right? It's almost like this becomes an observer, and that's what it's supposed to be. It's not who you are. It's just the vehicle that transports you through this natural world. Who you are is Christ. And this, that's what this world needs to see. And that's why I said when they see Christ, they'll see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. When he comes back, a lot of people are going to be shocked the second time, the same as they were the first time. He's not going to fit that religious mold. He won't fit into that religious box. Praise the Lord. He's a spirit in a body. 
Hallelujah. And so are you. And the Spirit is who you are. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, have you guys put this out on the uh, the website or anything as far as... Uh,